In the previous section, we described the components of a Live FPGA system. By the end of this module, you will be able to describe the differences between a Live View FPGA system and an NIDAC MX system. To understand the paradigm of a Live View FPGA system, it's important to understand the specific components found in a traditional measurement system. So here we have a NIDAC MX system, and if we take a look at it, uh, we see that the M series device that's vendor defined, right? And this is a piece of hardware that you, you're not defining the functionality of the hardware. Uh, this is something that the vendor namely National Instruments, in this case, is provided to you already. There's also a driver, so you see the NIDAC MX driver, and this is also vendor-defined. It's the way that your hardware communicates with your software. And then what you do get to define in this case is, is your LabVIEW VI. So here you're, you're, you're able to define the software that executes on the host PC. So if we take a look at the LabVIEW FPGA system, let's kind of contrast that. So let's take a look at the hardware side first, okay, on, on the right side of the slide. So the real hardware that you're buying, uh, of course, some of it is going to be vendor defined. However, because you're able to actually program the FPGA chip, which is hardware that exists on the real hardware, you're actually able to define uh, the functionality of the hardware itself. Now, if you take a look at the software side, there's still a vendor defined NI Rio driver to communicate between the hardware and the software. Um, but you can also, again, define something on the host side. So on the host PC side, you can create uh, and, and define how that host program works and how that host program is going to communicate with your customized hardware that you're also defining the logic of on your hardware. In this slide, we see how decision making is done in software. So if you look at a traditional system, notice that you've got your, you, you've got your UUT, your unit under test, and you have your you have all these layers between the the hardware and the actual calculation. So if you take a look at it, you've got your UUT there, and it's got to go through an I/O layer, then it has to run on an operating system, and then it has to go through a driver API, and then your application software, which you're defining the calculation on. Now, if you're running this, a crash can can occur either at the OS level, at the API level, and also at the application software level. So there's several places for a crash to to occur. Also, um, if you're running this on a Windows OS, uh, you're going to get response times in the range of milliseconds. Uh, if you're running it on a real-time OS, it, you get some better performance. You can get things in the range of microseconds. However, there's a lot of, because both of them are running on OSs, uh, there are many places for that crash to occur. So here we contrast that with decision making in hardware. So if you're looking at a live
previous 